So the other day I took apart a old Casio electric typewriter and mentioned that I wanted to turn the keyboard into a USB keyboard for a PC, but uh, that I needed some kind of adapter to attach the microcontroller board to the keyboard itself. But then having another look at it, I realized that there's only like 30 connections. I could build an adapter, but it would be so much faster and easier just to like solder the wires on. So let's give that a try. This will also give me the opportunity to try out my new toy. This moderately dubious solder sucker for desoldering, which I haven't used yet. So it's, I can smell it beginning to heat up. It'll probably burn off paint in a hideously smelly way, but we'll see whether it works and, you know, whether it electrocutes me. So I'm going to take the LCD board off because that's not participating in this. It just unplugs, so with a bit, bit of difficulty. Come on. There we go. And here you can see the top, well, the bottom really of the connector which normally connects the thing or to the typewriter's main board. And I want to remove this so I can solder on some wires. So, let's give the solder sucker a try. It's essentially a hollow soldering iron with a piston attachment. So, let's untangle the wire. So what we do is we hold it on a joint, melt the joint and push the button. Did anything actually happen? That did actually get some of the solder off. Let's go around and do the others. The professional ones, or at least the less unprofessional ones, have a powered sucker. So you just stick the thing on and it sucks all the solder out into a reservoir. Has that done anything? That is actually removing the solder reasonably well, which is awesome. So hopefully I do the rest and then it just comes off. I think this cost me about three francs with all the electrical safety there's some that apply uh, yeah with all the electrical safety that price tag implies and yes i did check that it works with 240 volts so there's 30 connections two of them are for power these two fat tracks on the side. The power is used but to drive both the keyboard itself, which is just a simple switching device and so it doesn't use much, and is also routed to the LCD unit. And I'm going to assume that the thing's running off 5 volts because everything does, at least everything from this era does. Run. work. No, it's so hot. Just wonder if we're melting the connector yet. Not much. So the camera is still running and is still hopefully focused. The soldering iron seems good and hot, which is nice. If it turns out that the thing doesn't run off 5 volts, the only thing I can actually damage is the LCD controller. 
And it'd be nice to have that. This thing's going to be plugged into USB, so I can either use a custom protocol to draw stuff on the screen or just turn it into a TTY. TTY, I mean serial port. Sorry, I'm more focused on not setting fire to myself than talking coherently. Now, I haven't seen any solder come out of this thing yet. So I wonder where it's all going. It did come with this, which I assume is for cleaning the muzzle. So, intriguing. Well, I have sucked most of the solder on this thing, so is it actually not actually loose enough to come off? It's not bad. I think with a bit of encouragement that will just come out. There's a blob of solder on that pin there, so let's just remove that. That's actually coming out. Some of the joints need a bit of encouragement. I think it's actually still this one on the end, so let's give that one another go. Yeah, one of the pins somewhere isn't quite making it through the hole. It could be this one. Most of them have come out cleanly, which is great. I loathe desoldering. It is my least favourite job. So the fact that this is actually making it easier, let's apply a little bit of Bruce Force and Ignorance. Ah, that's interesting. It's the pins on the other side that are the problem. There we go. A little bit bent but it's easy enough to bend back again. I'm not going to use this connector again, but worth having. If I... So this is the ribbon connector that it actually works in. This is actually still good enough to use. Should I ever need to get 30 wires from one PCB to another with this terrible staggered pin spacing, which is extremely unfriendly to 0.1 inch components. So I was thinking that for the wire, I was going to use this piece of scrap uh, ribbon cable 
from a uh, SCSI enclosure. This is, in fact, the one I built the flux engine for. Uh, the flux engine out of, sorry. Now, it's kind of a shame to lose the connectors at the end, but I don't really think I'm going to use USB again. And they appear to be riveted together, so... Are they riveted? No, they're not riveted. So I can just unclip these. Or, you know, break the clips. That works just as well. Yeah. And this piece should just come off. Uh, or not. Oh, there's another latch. Right, these, yeah, these, the connectors, uh, the clips I've just broken are used for attaching another piece of the IDC connector. The actual <laughs> clip here also breaks. I suspect this is very old and the plastic is brittle. And let's just snap the other one off as well. So that I can unplug this. So, IDC connector. The way it works is you place your ribbon cable in the connector. Clamp it on with this thing. And these little blades push through the ribbon cable and make electrical contact. It's great. They're actually really easy to use. But let's trim off the end of the cable. Relatively straight. Now, the great thing about this ribbon cable it, it, is that it is half of 0.1 inch pitch. So, it actually lines up very nicely with our staggered 0.1 inch pitch holes. So, I need one, two, three, four, five, six, thirty. <laughs> I need thirty wires. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So tear it here. And just check that we have enough wires. That is a yes. And let's just remove some cable. Vital piece of electronics equipment. A good pair of kitchen scissors. These can go back into the junk drawer. This is going to be the cable that connects to the PCB. And this, very importantly, is going to be the cable I'm going to practice stripping wire on. Because I'm going to have to strip 60 ends. I'm going to try and use my wire stripper here to see if it works. So, Wow, that worked. It's not very good, but it worked. Let's try the other side. So it didn't go in quite straight. Let's try a bit more care. The gripper that holds the wire doesn't grip very well. So I kind of have to put my finger on it to make it work. Actually, it's working. It's not so great, but it's working. So. Right, but you can only strip 
some at a time, so I'm going to actually need to batch it. So how many is this done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's split this up into three lots of ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And actually, before I go any further, turn off this soldering iron, turn on the other one. So that was slightly more exciting than I was hoping. Turns out I don't have anywhere to put a red hot soldering iron other than the soldering iron stand, which needed to contain my other soldering iron. So I just ended up wandering around the house till I found somewhere to put it. So let's strip these. Come on. Possibly 10 was a bit. Uh, yeah, 10 was indeed over optimistic. I can't do 10 reliably. So let's split this up a bit more. Now I'm eventually going to have to divide these up into staggered odd and even pairs to go into the holes here. So I don't actually mind splitting the wires. Okay. I'm looking for about three to four millimeters of bare wire. Possibly a little bit more than that. The other end of this wire is going to be worse. I'll show you why when I get there. Oh, come on. This wire stripper is great when it works, when it works. Right. A little bit more than I wanted, but that's fine. It all needs to be relatively even. Problem is, most of the wire is getting in the way of itself. Mm. Quite a lot in the way of itself. It's exciting. And the last bit. Mm, rather more than I wanted. This one needs trimming back a little, though there'll be plenty of slack. Doesn't need to be precise. I mean, here's all a bodge. Okay. So, 
Now I need to split these up into single strands. which is slow and laborious and always as ugly as sin. And you need good fingernails for it. The end result will not be pretty, but it should work. Once this is done, I will end up tinning, uh, um, twisting and tinning each of these individual ends, all 30 of them. And then we get to insert it into the board and solder them on. Which is actually the easy bit. I have yet to decide whether pin 1 or pin 2 is 5 volts. I'm going to wire this thing up so the red stripe is on pin 1. Uh, this ribbon cable has got the red stripe at one end so you know which side is which. However, I then can't solder it up to the, the microcontroller until I figured this out. The most of the keyboard won't care as it's just like a switch. But there is a, a NAND gate on the board which will care and of course the, the LCD module will very much care. It's this big fat controller. So it's important I get that right. They will be soldered to the ground and 5 volt pads on the microcontroller. I could just solder all the wires to GPIO pins and then figure out which one to set to 0 and which one to set to 5 volts in software because this particular microcontroller will let you do that. But I'm not entirely certain whether the, uh, the microcontroller's GPIO pins can provide enough power to run the LCD. Okay. Twist, twist, gonna have to do it all again on the other end, but worse. You know what? I'm going to solder these and I'm going to tin these now to hold, to hold them together because some of them are already beginning to untwist. Actually, thinking about it, I do hope this cable is old enough to be copper because they did make some of these cables from aluminium and that's a right pain because aluminium won't solder. So. Good, that tin, that, that's copper. It's plated, which is why it's silvery. Hmm. 
Hmm. That's tinned very badly. Sword is just not sticking. Yeah, also let's not do a soldering on top of the keyboard because, you know, if that had fallen on the tracks, it would have been a pain to get off. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry, I have to hold this sufficiently close to my face so I can see what I'm doing, but I bet the camera is not focusing. The checkerboard cutting mat is really great at giving the camera a focus target, even when you don't want it to. And most of this solder is actually being wasted. So it's not sticking to the, uh, the wires. But I need it because of the flux in the wires. I wonder whether I should get out my big pot of flux and start dipping. Let's try that, this one. Yeah, these wires are not brilliant. You're not really supposed to, to uh, solder these things. Let's see if that helped. Maybe. So I might have actually been better off with just segments from the spool of wire. Well, the ribbon cable does make it easier to track which wire goes where. Yeah, I don't think that's going to help. Unfortunately, the wire is springy and my ability to twist it is not brilliant and it just untwists its on its own accord. We are over halfway through, halfway through this end. I 
I'm getting to get less convinced that this is sustainable. Now the reason why I'm why I took the connector off in favour of the ribbon cable is because the wires have to go into both sides of this board and the ribbon connector is essentially unmanageable. It's, uh, it's a flex PCB coated with copper and you can't solder it. You could, the only thing you can do with those is friction fit them into the appropriate connector. And as half the holes will have to go into one side and the other half in the other, you're just not going to get connectors that do that. Now, I was, I'm also wondering the original plan was to solder this end onto the keyboard PCB and then work on the other end with it anchored. But this is so fiddly and annoying that I'm wondering whether that's a good idea. Whether I should try and prepare both ends of the cable first before soldering anything. The other thing, of course, is maybe I don't need to solder it. Maybe I don't need to tin it at all. If I just straighten the wires, they'll actually go through the hole anyway. And I can just solder the top without needing to um, treat them. The holes in this are a bit smaller. Yeah, it doesn't want to go in. they got a stray strand. Uh, I'm going to have to tin them to it the hard way. One at a time. Just. Four more to go. Well, 34 more to go, really. This is the kind of thing solder pot's useful for. I've never used one. I don't really want one either. A solder pot is, instead of a soldering iron, it's a sort of heated cauldron full of bubbling solder. Or rather, not bubbling, you're not supposed to get it that hot. And in a situation like this, you just dip the ends of your wires in, you're done. Of course, the great thing about solder pots is that if you spill them, you can do yourself enormous amounts of damage. Which is why I don't want one. Okay, those are now all tinned with various degrees of aptitude. So, 
I'm not going to solder this down, but we want pin one to be on this side. So one goes, oh dear, this is going to be dreadful. So they're going to go in like this. And yes, they do go through. Yeah, that's going to be a right pain to put in. But once I've soldered a few down, the rest will all be locked in place, which is nice. I'm going to have to do the other end. Okay, so the way this is going to work is that these 30 wires will get split alternately into 15 odd and 15 even. And these will then go here. So in fact, they're going to splay out quite a lot. I'm wondering how much wire I wanted to leave. I think quite a lot. This is going to be wasteful. So, does this thing come off? There we go. So I'm going to mount this thing in a box with the LCD controller here. The top of the box is going to be made out of the top shell of the typewriter sawn off here. The back is going to have the USB controller in it. So the wire, which is going to come out about here, is going to need to fold up. So it very much depends how much wire I have. So if I mount the thing like this, then I need to chop off quite a lot of wire. But I also need quite a lot of surplus wire to account for the splay. Yeah. Well, I can always make the wires shorter but not longer, so... And the other thing I need to do is to uh, go through the pins on the board and figure out the dedicated ones. So in fact, I will go and do that now. Okay, that's done. I've blacked out the pins I don't want to use. The ones on the bottom have capacitors attached to them. And these two at the top are for programming the device. And these two here, uh, this one is wired up to the switch which is nominally useful, and this one is wired up to the LED, which is also nominally useful. Right, the other thing I did was I looked up the pin out of this NAND gate, and I determined that pin 7 is ground. So we mark this in dark as being ground. Put a bit more dark on. So that means that one We'll connect to one of these pins over here, either two or one. Always test your multimeter beeper before you use it. Two. 14 is positive, so that should be one. That's correct. Awesome. All right, so that pin two is ground. Let's mark this one as well. And that's nice, because we were going to wire up the red stripe to pin 1, and red means live. So, how am I going to do this? So, uh, two of these wires will be, will be siphoned off and go on here. They're even in the right order. The others will need to be turned into odds and evens. You know what? I am going to solder this down 
onto the PCB now because I think that every single wire is going to have to be routed distinctly. So let us start with pins one and two. So just a little bit of dead solder, I'm just going to tack this down. Give, let me free up my hand to solder the other one on. Okay, and now re solder this joint. Okay, and what have we got? We've got decent joints. Now, the next question is, do I want to do the other end now, or do I want to work along? I am going to work along, at least for the time being. So, wow, this is fiddly. Still faster than making the board. I had some tweezers here a moment ago. So is that actually wood? I think so. Good joint. I don't think that's a good joint at all. So I think that there's a blob of solder and I can't see the wire through it. So I think what that's actually done uh, yeah. is it's covered the wire without making electrical contact. That's not so great either. That's better. Yeah. Because I can see here the wire is actually pulled out. Put a little bit of pressure on the side of the wire, hopefully without burning myself, and apply a little bit of solder to this side. Does that push in any further? 
Okay. Right, he's actually making electrical contact, so I won't fiddle with it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven goes in here. Why is not? There we go. The solder sucker has left the holes nice and clean, which is good. I was worried that I'd end up with films of solder across the holes, thus preventing me from pushing wires in. But it hasn't. So I think that was worth every penny of the three francs I spent on it. Might have been a bit more. Might have been as much as five. So I'll try to try to bend the wire to give a little bit of pressure. That helps the wires actually project through the holes, thus allowing the solder access to the top of them. Yeah, they look good. I have seen this kind of soldering done in commercial products and I do wonder how it was done, whether they had like rows of automated humans doing this or whether you can do it by machine. I really hope you can do it by machine. That one Did I push? Oh yeah, okay, only four. OK. 
Okay. Oops, that's a bridge. The thump was me banging my elbow on the table, holding the thing, to jolt it, to break loose a any blob of solder on the on the board. Old trick, surprisingly effective. Okay. I don't know. That's not right. I think that's this one. Yeah, the wire hadn't gone all the way down through the book through the board. So there was a bit sticking up. Yeah, I really need one hand to hold the to hold the wires against the board, one hand to hold the solder and one hand to hold the soldering iron. Yeah, that did not work. But it did manage to tack the wires down. This is very tedious. That is not a good joint. That needs more solder. Okay. Now, I traced some of the board earlier, and I know that the pins down this end drive the LCD, and the pins up this end are mostly the keyboard matrix. Thankfully, the microcontroller doesn't care. Its pins are almost completely remappable. It does have a built-in I squared C. SPI controller, which likes a particular set of pins, but frankly, come on, I'm not going to be using it. I'm going to build my own, well, I'm going to be using a standard component that builds its own in Verilog. 
and that can be attached to any arbitrary pin. So I don't care what they're attached to. I probably wouldn't be doing this if I needed to do more accurate pin mapping, uh, pin assignment rather, because that stuff's no fun. That's the thing I like about these boards. What I don't like, ah, it needs retinning. What I don't like about these boards is they're relatively pricey. These cost, these cost $10 each plus shipping, which is pricey. And then that one. And the tooling is all incredibly proprietary. I mean, it's good. It's one of the few things that actually persuades me to boot into Windows. It's a uh, all-in-one environment where you can draw the circuit that goes on to the SoftLogic FPGA part of the device. And then it generates all the C code for the code part of the device. And no tedious setup required. You just design your circuit, write a few lines of C code that actually like stitch your components together, and it works. Okay, there's a blob of solder on that wire and it's not going through the hole. So since I've got these two wires in, Let's solder them into place while I fiddle with it. And again, I'm going to need to tack them down. Ouch! That was not, that was not clever. Yeah, I managed. I very slightly burnt myself, which managed to, but the reflex managed to pull the wire out of the hole. Didn't even manage to stick the wire down. Yeah. Excuse my ergonomics. Okay, the, that one's stuck down. Solder this one down properly. Solder this one back down properly. I hope. Nope, that didn't go in. You know, I actually think now I would have been much better off going with ordinary single lengths of wire. Okay. What's wrong with this? It's got a lump on it.
not working. Because the tip of the wire is tinned, it's slightly stiff, but it's not stiff enough to push through the hole. I'm trying to shape the ends so it'll actually go through. There we go. Right, and the next one. I'm going to need a bit of, bit of force to actually stick them down. So let's see if I can do this without burning myself this time. I didn't really burn myself, it was just a shock. Hopefully two. Okay, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, four more pairs to go, and luckily the number of holes matches the number of wires, which is always good to see when you're doing something like this. That's the wrong wire, I want this one. Because the last thing I want to do is to have to do this again. Get some of these wires are out of the way. Going in, that's going in. Four. Four. Good. Okay, this is again ergonomically exciting and not going to show up on the camera very well. Also, I keep banging my head on the microphone. I wonder what that sounds like. So I have to keep my thumb on the back of the wires to keep them stuck in, stuck down. Ok. 
Okay, managed to get. Two wires very nearly stuck together. Yep, yeah, not quite. Okay, I believe the camera may have lost some footage there. Uh, I think it reached the end of its 30 minute filming cycle and stopped. Which is really annoying, apparently it's due to tax reasons. So with, with luck you missed me bodge some of the worst joints I've ever done. Okay. Are you going to stay in place unsupervised? Probably not, but that'll do. Let's straighten the wires up a bit. Yes, they are going to stay, which is nice. That means I can do this properly. One, two, three, three. Four. Okay. Yikes, that one pulled out. Luckily, just a very slight touch of heat makes it go in. My soldering iron is got lots of heating ability and these are very small tracks. Okay, I think that's possibly done. Let me just have a quick here close up of some of the joints. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm seriously going to have to redo these. These are terrible. These are dreadful. And there's a bridge. Probably just made it worse. We are actually progressing. It is working if a bit slowly.
Uh, yeah, what I'm doing now is I'm just chopping some of the tail ends off. Uh, that looks like a bridge. And visually inspecting. I should get myself a loop or a set of binocular glasses. Um, I think that now I moved. Good enough, I think. This one needs more solder. It's not a bridge. I'm amazed. Okay, those are not good joints, but I think they'll do. Uh, just one tiny bit of tidying. Right, that makes it 9.30 p.m. So I've been at this for an hour and a half. So I am going to give this a rest for now and do the rest of it, which is this stuff, tomorrow. But thanks to the magic of video editing, that is just a few moments for you. So, day two of the keyboard assembly. So yesterday I soldered on this cable rather ineptly and hopefully in an electrically coherent manner. Today I'm going to solder the other end onto my chosen controller board. And just to remind people of the physical layout, what's eventually going to happen is this LCD panel will plug back on and go here. This will all go in a box of some description at a bit of an angle and the controller board will probably be tucked in the back of the box. So I actually want this cable to be quite short. So let us put it about here on the cable. So the first thing we do is we trim the cable. like so. And now we need to start sorting out which wires go what. Now, it's been soldered down so that pin one is the red stripe in the normal fashion. Pins one and two are ground and power, which are the ones that go on the end. So we want to peel these off first. and peel them down to about here. The rest of the wires are going to go alternately to the top and bottom of the board. So they'll be soldered on about here-ish. So looking at the geometry, we've got voltage ground, which are these two. The reset line we want to leave unconnected. And then pin 0 0.7 here and 2.3 here are the first data lines. These ones are unusable pins due to issues with the board. So, I'm just wondering the best way to do this. Do I want to peel them apart and then strip them all individually? Yes, let's do that. It will be a while. This is going to be a slow and laborious job. Uh, 
I did actually try to stick the cable to the board using a sticky pad earlier offline, but it didn't really work. It may actually be worth just peeling the ribbon cable all the way back and dealing with discrete wires, but let's try it like this to start with. Also, soldering the cables on is going to be, in the right order, is going to be interesting. The cables are going to go to the underside of the microcontroller board so that we have access to the top for doing, you know, pushing the buttons. So we need to make sure to do the near side first so that we can do the, we don't end up covering the things we want to solder through. with the other wires. The other thing I need to do, which I am not doing right now, I'm going to do later, and normally you would do this in the other order, is to map the board, because I need to figure out which of these wires actually controls what on the board. And the reason why I'm going to do it later is because the board is dead simple, the microcontroller itself doesn't care which wire goes where. Everything is remappable with this thing. Trivially so. So I can change the order of the... I can change the assignment of each of the pins in software, including stuff like the... whatever control system is used for the LCD display. But the other reason I want to do this afterwards is because I don't really care which of these wires is used for what. What I really care about is which of the pins on the microcontroller board does what. So once it's all soldered down, I can then check the continuity between this and the actual keys on the keyboard, and I don't just figure out the assignment of all the pins, but I also get to check electrical continuity, which is always worth having. Okay, so we're going to put this about here. The cables need to splay out, so we need to give lots of slack. So actually, let's assume that they're going in at the end. Interesting, actually. Yeah, I was actually planning on soldering this row first, trimming the wires to length, soldering these, and then doing the other side. So I'm now rather wondering whether I want to do it the other way round. Because there's actually going to be more splay than I thought. So there are 30 wires which need to go on here. I was planning on doing 15 on the top and 15 at the bottom. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a gap. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 to here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then a gap. 14 and 15 to here. Okay, that's not so bad. So, I want to trim them relatively long, because if I actually cut them too much off, then I'll have to take the whole thing off and try it again. Yeah.
Okay, let's give this a go. Uh, this way up. So we assume these go here, and these ones are starting from about here. So we want to take off two centimeters. So let's start with the power cable. So, do I want to put this one on the bottom row or the top row? Let's go with the bottom row. That's also, let's make sure that this is actually the wires are slightly. Yeah, this one wants to go on the bottom row because they are getting crossed. So, actually, let's. Let's remove the LCD board. Let's do this the other way up. So, low. Uh, come on. High. Low. High. Low. High, low, high, low, yeah, this is just as exciting to do as this to look, not that one, that one, as it is to look at. Okay, so these are the ones that go on the bottom, and we've got this one here for length. So we want to trim them to approximately here. Right. Now we just need to strip them all. A bit more than that. This is incredibly fiddly, but it is actually more reliable than me using wire cutters. There's something not quite right about the, the claw that holds this down. It does. This doesn't quite move of its own accord, which it really should. I don't know why, so I generally have to give it a nudge. It's mostly pretty good, but... I mentioned the other day that the pins down one end of the connector are the keyboard matrix and the pins at the other are the LCD controller. I don't know what protocol the LCD controller uses yet. It'll be easily a bit bangable. I just need to figure it out. Oh. 
That's not so great. That actually cut the wire. I haven't identified yet which ones are the keyboard columns and rows. That's also not so great. Let's loosen this a bit more. Okay, yeah. So I need to twist the ends to make them tidy and then I'll go through and tin them all. Yeah, okay, this did not strip properly and some of the wires have lost strands, so I'm not actually particularly convinced about this. There's a little bit of safety margin, so I could go through and take some more off, but I'd rather not. Doing the ones at the end, I'm bumping the wires further along. Okay. Solder. Soldering. Ah, let's try turning the soldering iron on first, shall we? That's better. It does have a lot of power to it, so it won't take long to heat up. I'm watching the temperature reading. 300, 310, 20, 30, 50. And it actually takes a little bit longer for the bit to heat up. There we go.
Oh, and unexciting, I'm afraid. And I want that one is as a stray strand of wire. Okay, well that wasn't brilliant, but goes this way round, so that actually got too much solder on it to go through the hole? That's a pain. I think it does. Yeah, there's a little wide bit at the end. Where did I put my cutters? Yeah. I'm going to have to solder these. Uh, right, that is not actually working. I'm going to have to do these do these one at a time, at least in small groups. And this is one of those things where I need lots of hands. Once I've got a few in, it should be better. All right. did not actually make joints because I can't see what I'm doing. Ground made a joint and VDD did make a joint. This goes into 0 0.7. Six. Ah, oh no, no, that is right. So I thought I missed one. I hadn't. Of course, the order doesn't really matter. So it'd be nice to get it right, but this is never going to be elegant. 0 0.5. Just wait for the smoke to dissipate. 
and reset the camera, which is nearing the end of a reel. Right, not 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, but we go straight to 0 0.1. Another reason not to you try and use any kind of like header pins or other connectors is that discrete wires are actually a lot easier to get on and off boards like this. Because they can be soldered and unsoldered one, one at a time. Whereas headers generally have to go on and off as a unit. So you've got to unsolder all the pads before the connector will come off. And this is generally incredibly problematic, at least for my soldering skills. Okay, that was 15.5. Yeah, we've run out of port zero, we're now onto port 15. 15.4. which is shared with CMOD, whatever that is. There's a fair pile of custom hardware on these things. There are a few dedicated pins, most of them are remappable, but, but I think that's one of the uh, dedicated things. 15.3 and now I notice that this pin, this wire is actually out of sequence. Never mind, it's been trimmed so it's going to have to go to this side of the board. So that's going to go into 15.2. flux. <laughs> and I've just spotted, I have in fact been soldering these to the top of the board and not the bottom. Well, that's great. So that's not necessarily bad. So I was planning for these wires to go underneath and come to this side. I could still do that. They would be tucked under here. Or I could have them come over. In fact, the only control that I really need access to is the button here. And it's not even a, it's just a button connected to a wire pin 2.2 this one. So I don't really need that either. I have a feeling that if I were to unsolder these, uh, chances are I would lose a little bit of the end of each wire.
because some of them didn't really survive the stripping process terribly well. You know what, there's only a few left to go, so I will just solder the rest and then experiment with it. You can always remove them again afterwards. And that was just carelessness. I think I just drop some solder. Yep. Yeah. Drop some solder onto the board. This goes into pin I don't know if my microphone will pick it up, but it sounds like my neighbour upstairs has just started practising the piano. Which they don't do very often. Three point four. Okay, no, right. is this going to work? I think this will. Not, not too bad actually. That actually gives a bit of spring to the wires, so I can put this. Yeah, that's going to be fine. Okay, right. Now I need to strip and tin the other side. And I've got a bit more slack this time, so I'm actually going to try the wire cutters. This is not very successful. I'm very worried about, cut, about squeezing too hard and cutting the wire, you see. Okay, that's not working. So this thing's got this adjustment here for uh, for how much it strips by, but it's actually undone all the way. So this thing's now working. Ah, maybe it just doesn't work. Yeah, this needs to be. I have a spare piece of wire. Let's try, Let's try this. Right, well, so that's actually cut through some of the strands and there's enough. This piece of wire is so short that uh, the 
insulation here hasn't gripped the uh, the actual wire inside, which is why it pulled out like that. Hmm. Don't like that much. I don't like this either. I think I'm generally doing a better job of stripping it than this thing does, but it's really dubious. So let's just give this one, one a try. And that cut the wire. Yep. I think this stuff's just too thin for the mechanical stripper. So far I haven't managed to wreck one of these wires, but mechanical strippers have, so let's stick with this. Stripping wires is one of the things I like least about electronics. It's not really a skill you can get away without. But, oh, I hate it. Upstairs, discovering new and interesting chords. Probably not appearing on the microphone. I quite a good cardioid directional mic. Okay. So. And this wire is still not twisting very well. So these are reasonably straight. This one's been bumped. Yep, they look okay. Tinning time. One, two. Four. That was close, nearly hit the board.
Okay, I think that's the lot. This one's got a big solder blob on the end, so let's lay that up a little. Like so. That one's got a blob too. Okay. So starting with this one, this goes into port 2.3, which is here. I seem to have a bit more wire on this side than I did on the other, because my terrible stripping has actually done a better job. So let's see if I can insert several. There's a stray strand of wire that didn't get stuck into the solder. Ah, come on. Okay, yeah, let's just do these three. So these two here are the ones I need to skip because they're the ones used to program the board. Depending what they're used for, they could be shared. Like if they're just switches, then everything will be fine. You know, as long as I don't try to program the board with a key pressed, which will cause the switches to be either grounded or made high. But we've got lots of pins, let's just avoid them. Okay, yeah, the, this side is easier. One, two, three. Huh, that's interesting. I can actually get them all in this side of the debug, of the programming pins. That's nice. position is very awkward and my hand is shaking. All right. Is that the lot? I believe that's the lot. Those joints look okay. These ones look pretty bad. Um, I'm not actually going to snip those off just yet, I think. Yeah, that's fine. That will squash into the box. It's going to be at a slight angle for ease of typing. So this can actually, it may even go under the board. But there's no problem there. All right, well, there's a very dubious looking joint. 
3.7 is not right. That wasn't 3.7. That was 3.6. This is 3.7. Those all look okay to me. Yeah, mostly let's stick the ones at the bottom. The idea is to remove the straight end out, out that stretches out, that reaches out past the solder joint, because it can easily, if you fold over and short against a different joint if pressure is put on it. Yeah, let's do these as well. Okay, I think that's done. So let's turn the iron off. and chip away the salt blobs. Come on. I had something, yep. Yeah. There we go. And I think now it's time to move on to the next phase, which is to map the board. And I need to do a bit of setup for that, I believe. So, be right back. Okay, here is the setup. All I needed was a pen and paper. But we're not going to touch that just yet because now I need to get the PCB off the board. And to do this, I need My trusty power screwdriver, set to unscrew mode. Because we need access to the track side of the board. Now I do have a photo of the board, which I could, and I could trace the tracks on that. But frankly, it's much easier and more reliable to use a continuity tester. And involves less thinking. Of screws, which is kind of a good thing. Okay, so the board will just lift off. This will go off to one side. Okay, so Each key switch is a conductive rubber pad that presses down against these spiral things and connects the two together. Uh, the, that then closes a switch which connects together two pins on the board. So the first thing we need to do is to label the keys. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. These are just, these are purely arbitrary. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sixty one, sixty two, sixty three. Right, this is the map of our keyboard. Uh, the other thing I actually need is a different piece of paper, which I shall go and get now. Which is this one. And this is actually going to be the map of the, the pins of the board. So I need to mark down a XY grid of all the pins. So this may take a few moments. Two, three, two, four. Okay, hopefully I will have fast forwarded through that so that you didn't have to watch me do it. This gives us a XY grid of all possible pairs of connections on the, from the microcontroller to the keyboard. So now what we need to do is figure out which keys do what. However, the first thing I'm going to do is to sound out the LCD controller pins because this will actually let us eliminate a big chunk of these. There's quite a lot of pins there. So, yep, and luckily they are labeled on this side, which saves a lot of time. So pin one of the LCD is 3.4. There are 14 pins, one, two, three. Check that one, that was 3.4, 3.4, pin 2, 3.5, pin 3, Three point six. As I should have expected, but didn't have a very good connection. Pin four. That's interesting. Point seven. It is three point seven, but it's not very happy about it. That might not be a good joint. So let's mark that. We need to resolder that one. Also, I am in fact counting these in fact these all wrong. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, not one, two, three, four. So uh, one, two, three, three, five, three, six, three, seven, dodgy. Uh, if you do this the right way around. Twelve point one. Wonder if there's a capacitor in here somewhere that's making it pay funny. Twelve zero. Nope, just wasn't a good connection. Two three. 
four, probably twelve one. Yep. Uh, six, twelve, two, uh, eight, twelve, three, all nice and predictable. Uh, one, three, five, seven, nine. Zero. Ten is twelve. Four. Uh, eleven. Eleven. One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Any? That one. Fifteen one. Twelve. Should be ground. Uh, ground, yes. Thirteen. Perhaps, yep. So that leaves pin fourteen. As none of the above. Interesting. Okay, it might, it's possible he's just not connected to anything. I believe it is just not connected to anything. I don't see any tracks come off it here. Okay, that's good. So we've now actually managed to eliminate 13 pins from our matrix. Which is three, four, three, five, three, six, three, seven, fifty naught, fifty one. So all of this is not on the matrix. And meanwhile, in the other direction, all the way up to fifty one. Is not in the matrix. The, for the other pins, we've got twelve zero, twelve one, twelve two, twelve three, twelve four. So twelve zero to twelve four. The none we know that these are not involved in the keyboard matrix.
and in this direction Zero, zero, one, two, three, four. Right, so now we just need to figure out what all the combination of the other ones are. Now, I need access to I need access to the connections here and also here. That was a good way to do this. Hang on, I can actually get at the copper from the top of the microcontroller board, so I can do it this way around. So, uh, key number one up here is this one here. And you see there's even some handy test tracks. So we stick that in there and we run this along. Right, I can't actually see which one that's it's going off there. This would be much easier had I soldered these on to the correct side of the board. So that did somewhat fail. That is 0 0.1, and this one is 1 of these, Fifteen point. So, zero one here, fifteen three here is key number one. Yay, right. So we actually, so we now need to repeat this for all the other keys. You know, this is a complete waste of time. I don't need to manually map the board. I have a microcontroller here that can do it for me. I've identified which rows were the, the keyboard matrix. So I've only got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I've only got 17 by 17 possible combinations. So it would in fact be really easy to write a very simple program that runs on the microcontroller board that cycles through all the combinations and if it sees a connection it just outputs the uh, which key it is. So I don't need any of this mapping at all. The only thing I actually needed to do was to identify the pin assignments. I'm done. Well, that was a complete waste of time. So, it'd be really nice to have thought of this before making the video, because then I would have seemed like really clever for having said it. But no. Uh, the hardware is now done, apart from you know reassembling everything. And the next stage is to go to the computer and start programming. I would kind of like to have some of that on video as well, but I can easily record and do the actual programming bit. 
but I also need to be able to um, video me doing stuff with the board as well at the same time because it's a hardware project. So I'm going to have to think whether that's possible or not. Well, I'm kind of glad that I don't have to go through and map everything. Uh, once I'd figured out the routine, it wouldn't have taken nearly as long as that first key indicated. And there's still work to do in terms of actually putting it all into a into something you can actually type on, like a reasonable case. One, one annoyance is that even though this thing has mounting posts, although not very many mounting posts, these two, that will hold the keyboard reasonably securely, the controller board has no way of mounting it. What I did for a different project was to just like stick it on using a sticky pad on the bottom of the PCB, but that's not really satisfactory. Yeah, I could have done the necessary stuff figuring out the pinout without even taking the board off. Great. Well, if anyone is still watching this far, I probably don't have any credibility left to lose anyway, so never mind. Um. Another potential modification I could make is to add diodes everywhere to turn it into a N key rollover keyboard. But to be honest, I don't actually understand how they work, so I'm just going to leave it like this for now. And one thing I absolutely do need to do is to figure out what this stuff up here does. It's related to the caps lock key. That I know, uh, because one of the pins is connected to the LED. But I don't know why there would be a NAND gate here to run it. Surely the LED is driven directly from the board. Which actually... I should have mapped out whether the LED was connected to pins on the microcontroller. Luckily, the LED legs are exposed, so I can do that without taking the, the bottom of the board off again. Um, so let's try ground first, because I bet one end is connected to ground. No, VDD? Also, no. Interesting. Hmm. So this leg connects here to the NAND gate. Does not this one does not appear to be connected to any of these. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I'm going to have to sit down with a scan of the board and actually figure out the circuit diagram. Okay. Well.
some of these connections are going to come loose pretty soon. This one's not brilliant. It's not mechanically secure. But anyway, it is now electrically complete. So I can move it over to the computer and start programming. Quick addendum before I wrap up for the day. I tried powering it up to see what would happen. The microcontroller is unprogrammed and you get by default this blinky light. But I have discovered what that NAND gate does. It's the caps lock logic. It's done by the keyboard in hardware. So I'm willing to bet that the shift keys are reported as being actual keys, but the caps lock key is reported as a modify key. So this has now got the caps lock key held down. When I press shift, it releases it. Uh, it doesn't toggle because this is a typewriter keyboard and typewriters release the caps lock when you press shift. But this is no use for me because I want to turn this into a control key. So I'm going to have to figure out the circuitry and probably rip some of it out to turn this back into the ordinary modifier key. But it's really interesting. The LED is controlled by the keyboard. You can see it light up on the camera. Yes, you can. I thought this would be routed to a pin on the uh on the motherboard. Well, isn't that interesting? I mean, I've got spare pins. I can run a piece of wire to the controller to actually drive the LED myself if I wanted to. Well, there you go. As an addendum to the addendum, before I actually wrap up, I try plugging the LCD panel back in and then powering up. And what does it do when it's not connected to a computer? Self-test mode. So I can actually... Uh, it occurs to me this is not going to be impossible to see on the screen, on the camera. There you go. So it has actually lit up some of the segments. So you can see all the things that are available. I have no idea whether any of these things are going to be useful apart from the the 15 alphanumeric things, but at least that works. <laughs>